All right, welcome to our next video in our series, Programming in Java. This is the Advanced Array Traversal, or apparently Trevisal, let's try that again, Traversal uh, episode. Uh, we assume that you know what an array is, and you understand that traversing an array means to visit the elements in an array, usually using a for loop or a for each loop. There are some uh, interesting techniques you can use while traversing an array to perform some neat functions. And we want to talk about those today. So I'm going to go ahead and start by making a uh, array list. I'll call it nums. And I'm going to go ahead and use the shortcut to fill it with the numbers one through five. Let's review the two techniques that we have for traversal right now is I could use a for loop to say, give me all the elements from index zero up until nums.length and maybe while you're going through it you want to print out all those numbers so you print out nums of i something like that so the the purpose of that for loop right there is we're going to print out all the numbers one through five we can accomplish a similar task with a for each loop i can say grab each number which i will call um, elements just to kind of show it's the individual element it's coming from the nums collection. We can say print out element. There we go. So the first for loop prints out one through five. The second for loop does the exact same thing. So this is to show that the original for loop and the for each loop do identical things. Uh, we recall that the restrictions on the for each loop are that uh, it has to start at index zero, go to the final element, it must visit everything and it can't change any of the contents of the array. Those are, those are the restrictions. Well, the technique I want to talk about right now is called shifting an array. Some people call it rotating an array. And the idea is you take all of the elements and you ask them to either move forward or backwards one spot. So for example, you might consider it shifting to the left, the one, two, three, four, five, if all those elements shift to the left, so a left shift, would mean that the new array would look like two, three, four, five, and then the one fell off the edge on the left, and so it reappears at the end of the list. Similarly, a right shift asks all of the elements to move to the right, and so we would see that the five fell off the end, reappears at the front, and we get one, two, three, and four. So we need to change the contents of the array. That means, sadly, the 4-H loop's not going to get the job done for us. Let's go ahead and make a method that performs these tasks. Public static. Do I need to return anything? No, we know thanks to reference semantics that any changes we make in, down in this method are going to be permanent. Um, you could make the case that it's good to return the array when we're done changing it, but I'm going to not worry about that for this video. So I'm going to call this shift left, and its job is going to be to take an array of ints. I'm going to call R. That's my array, R. And what I want to do is I want to say, look, if you are the element that's at index 1, I'm moving you up to 0. And if you were at index 2, I'm moving you up to 1. So I'm going to start with that for loop that we know traverses everything. And I'm going to pause right here so we can think through what we need to do. I need to say that if I were to write out these individual commands, it would be that the element at location zero now holds the element at location one. And the element at location one now holds the element at, that was at location two, and so on and so forth. So we can, oops, that should say R, there we go. I could type this out all individually, but the problem is uh, I'm not sure how what the length is of this array. And if I just assume that it's length 5 or 10 or 2, uh, we're going to have a problem. So we need a for loop to accomplish this task for us. So we're going to say, um, all right, r of i, the number where I'm currently at, that element is going to get the number that's just next to it at i plus 1. So if I'm talking about 0, assign to yourself zero the value that's at one. If i is four, then it's gonna assign to itself the value that it's at five. 
It's going to go the whole way through the loop, shifting everything over. Now you might think that we're done and you're going to see there's going to be a problem. I'm going to use the arrays.toString method to print out the content of nums and you're going to see something break right here. Let's watch what breaks. The, wait, it's supposed to break right here. Da, 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 da. What? But hang on, let's double check and see what happened. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, you know what, folks? The method doesn't work if you don't call the method. Shift left, pass in nums. Okay, let's try this again. Boop. Exception in thread. Don't be lazy and not look and see what the problem is. It says index out of bounds exception. More than that, it tells me where I indexed out of bounds. It said you went and asked for index five. And you might think to yourself, there's five elements. Why aren't there five indexes? Remember, we zero index our arrays. This is the location zero, one, two, three, and four. Five is off the end of the list. We don't have an index five item. What that means is five tried to access the element that was beyond it that doesn't exist. So what we need to do is we're gonna say start at zero, go until r dot length minus one, minus one. We wanna shift up until that last element. So this, this allows me to run one fewer times and not index out of bounds. And then I get close to what I want, right? Everything's starting to move left, but I see that the one didn't get moved to the end, right? So now I might think to myself, oh, okay. Well, maybe what I need to do here is I just need to say, take the, um, take the first element, move it to the end, and then I can perform my shift, right? So let's say uh, the last element is gonna be r of r dot length minus one. Remember, r dot length minus one is the index of the it's the last index that's available to us. So we say r of r dot length minus one, you're gonna get what's at r of zero. I'm gonna take that first element in the array, which is the one, and I'm gonna move it to the end. Well, look at the problem this introduces here. I moved the one to the end, and when the time came to copy the five ahead of one spot, there was already the one there. So what we actually need to do is we need to save this front element of the array and move it to the final spot at the very end of our method. So I'm gonna hold this piece of code. We need this right here, but I'm gonna make a temporary variable, which I'll call first element, and I'm gonna store the first element there. Then we're gonna go ahead and iterate through the loop, shifting everything forward, making sure that we don't handle the very last spot so we don't index out of bounds. And then I'm gonna assign first element to that last location. And let's see if this does what we want it to do. Put them shifted left. Two, three, four, and five all moved to the left one, and one which fell off the edge got moved to the end. Again, the things that we were concerned about were handling that case of the number that has to swing to the other side. That's why we made our first element variable. And then uh, you wanna make sure not to index out of bounds. So something to be cautious there. We've done shift left, let's go ahead and try shift right. You're gonna see that the code starts pretty similar, but there's gonna be a few changes. So we'll shrink down shift left, let's go ahead and make this shift right. So you might be thinking to yourself, well isn't this just as easy as saying, hey, whatever is it, i plus one gets i? And you're, you're basically correct. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete out the first element business because we're not gonna have to worry about the first element we're gonna have to worry about the last element. So let's see what happens this time when I go to try to shift to the right. I run the code. I'm still calling shift left. We call shift right. Let's see what happens. And I get one, 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 one. What, what in the world happened here? Well, notice I said, all right, number one, shift to the right. And it overwrote the number two that was there. And then it tried to say, take in this, what's in this spot, the index one spot, and copy it forward. And we basically just copied a one the whole way down. So the problem with this is rather than incrementing up my array, we kind of need to start at the back of the array and move our way down. Let's, let's start at the five, shift the four into the five spot. Then we can shift the three into the four spot, so on and so forth. 
So how do I make an array that instead of incrementing and counting up, decrements and counts down? Well, let's start it at the very last array spot. I'm going to say i starts at r dot length minus 1. And that means I want to compare, so I'm going to start with index 4 in the case of nums, because it's got five elements in it. I'm going to say, you know what, if uh, you're at the i spot, I need you to get what's at the i minus 1 spot. So we need, uh, when i is 4, move the 3 into the 4 spot. When i is 3, move the 2 into the 3 spot. To make sure that we don't index out of bounds again, let's ask that i stays greater than 0 and that i goes down by 1 every time we run. Why did I say uh, i greater than 0? Because once i gets down to 1, we're going to move the 0 into the 1 spot, but I don't want i to make it all the way to 0 because it's going to ask to move the negative 1 index into the 0 spot, and that's going to break. So let's see if asking this thing to move the opposite direction helped us. And there it is, the 1, the 2, the 3, and the 4 all shifted to the right. But what we need to do is we need to save that last number, that 5, and then slide it to the front. So I'm going to say int last element is equal to r of r dot length minus 1. That's how we get the last element in an array. Excellent. And then when it's all said and done, that thing on the right got bumped off. It should appear on the far left location. So we say r of 0 equals last element. And if this all went the way I wanted it to, we should see that 5 appear back at the middle. So shifting is an advanced array traversal technique because there's a lot of things to think about. Number one, we're accessing two elements at a time. And we're going to use i plus 1 or i minus 1. And that means we run the risk of indexing out of bounds. So let's be careful that we're going to set the initialization and the test condition uh, carefully so that that doesn't happen. That's the first thing I would say. The second thing I would say is that not only do we have to loop through, but there's a bit of a, a fence post statement that needs to be made. We can complete a normal pattern to move the 1, the 2, the 3, and the 4 over, but the 5 needs some special treatment because it doesn't just get to move right because that's the end of the array. So we've got shift left, we've got shift right. What if I wanted to make a method whose job it was to determine whether or not the values of an array are all increasing? Meaning that uh, as the index goes up, the number has to get bigger and bigger. What does that look like? So I'm going to say public static void uh, array increasing. And we're going to accept an R as a parameter. And I'll print out whether or not it is or is not increasing. And we assume 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is increasing because every time we increase the index, the number got bigger. If the number were to ever stay the same, we would say that it fails and returns. It should say that it's not increasing. And uh, if it ever got lower, if it ever got smaller, we would say it's not increasing. Not increasing. That's an awkward word. So how do we check to see if this is happening? Well, again, we need a traversal that accesses two elements at a time. Um, and because I'm accessing two elements at once, the for each loop does not work. You would think because I'm not changing the elements of the array, we can use the for each loop. But the problem is uh, it's difficult to access two elements at once. I could create an index variable and compare my for each loops element variable to um, using my index variable. But as soon as you're going through the trouble of adding an index to the for each loop, you're, you're causing yourself more problems than you need to have. And you should just bite the bullet and make a good old fashioned for loop. So I'm going to say for int i equals 0, i less than. Now let's think about this. If I've got five numbers, I don't actually need to make this loop run five times. I only need to make it run four times. And that's because to determine if increasing is happening, I have to make four comparisons. I'm going to compare one and two, two and three, three and four, and four and five. That's only four comparisons. It's not like I also need to compare a five and a six. So to make sure that I don't index out of bounds, I'm going to say r dot length minus one. And then we're going to say i++. 
Whoops, except we're not going to do that. Semicolon. No, not semicolon. My goodness. Okay, there we go. Well, it's not picking up its colors. What did I do wrong? Four int i equals zero, i less than r dot length minus one. Let's see if I just try to like declare a variable in here. Is it still angry? I have a syntax error in here. What did I do? Or, oh, I killed the curly bracket for the method. Is that what I did? Ha ha ha, there it is. If your colors ever disappear, you did something wrong. Pause for a second and see what it is. Often it's just a missing semicolon or a missing curly bracket. Okay. So I need to check, is the number that I'm currently looking at smaller than the number that comes after it? So I'm going to say, look, uh, actually, if the number that I'm looking at smaller than really everything is normal. The, the case that concerns me is if I ever find out that uh, it is either the number where I'm at is bigger or equal to the next number. So if the current number is r of zero, I wanna check, hey, is this bigger or equal to the next number that's coming up? r of, I'm sorry, r of i, and the next number is gonna be r of i plus one. If that happens, we've got a problem. And what we wanna do is maybe I'm gonna make a Boolean here for increasing, and we're gonna assume that it's true. And if I ever come across the case where it's not true, I can set increasing to false. Increasing to false, okay. So then I, get, I make my whole way through the list. If I ever found a time where the current element is bigger than or equal to the next element, we know that increasing is false. And now I can use another if statement here. I can say, look, if it's increasing, if increasing, notice my use of a flag, we'll make a little print statement. The array is increasing. And if that was not true, if that was false, so we can use an else, the array, we can't say it's decreasing necessarily because it might go up and down. So we might say the array is not increasing. Okay. Let's test this. So we're going to send uh, this to array increasing. I can go ahead and comment that out. So we should either get that it is increasing, one, two, three, four, five, or that it is not increasing. And we should see, yay, the array is increasing. If I change this last number to a three, the array is not increasing. What if I decide to shift it first? Shift left nums. This should put it out of order, right? Let's, let's see what happens. It says the array is not increasing, and that makes sense. Two, three, four, five, those all went up, but one means it went back down. It's not increasing. So we can qualify aspects of our array. We can say, do the numbers continue to go up? Are there more even than odd numbers? Are there more positive than negative numbers? Uh, you can use conditional logic like these if statements to find out information about your arrays. So try that out. Uh, the last one I had planned for you is all even. Or actually, I'm gonna change it because all even is gonna look a little bit like increasing. Whereas if you found an odd number, then you would change all evens to false. Let's do uh, more even than odd. More even than odd, than odd. Oh, the English language. I think it might be then. Let's try then. Now I'm second guessing myself, then. I'm gonna go THAN. <clears throat> You'd think a grown man in his 30s would know the difference between then and then, but I guess not. Uh, let's make this return a Boolean. If there are more even than odd values, in this uh, uh, in this array, so I'm going to call this more even than odd int array, and we need to return something. I'm just going to say return true right now to to hold this. This is a little stub return that I'm going to remind myself to replace later. Let's make a couple of variables to count the numbers of evens and odds that are here. So I'm going to say. Um, I'll have int e for even starts at zero, int o for odd. And you know what? I'm gonna be well behaved and spell these out fully. And then we need to visit and inspect all of the um, 
all of the elements, but we don't need to change any of them. And we're not comparing multiple elements at once. So finally, 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 I can get back to using my for each loop. And when we're, it's all said and done, we're just going to answer the question, were there more evens than odds? Not equal, not less than, were there more? So I'm going to say for int element from r. Let's check. If the element mod 2 was 0, now remember mod 2 asks, what's the remainder after dividing by 2? Well, if you can divide by 2 and the, the remainder is 0, you've got yourself an even number. Um, then we can say even plus plus. We found an even. If that wasn't true, it must be an odd. And gosh, I think that might be done. Evens, odds. Check if it was even. Okay, let's give it a shot. Oh, except, you know, like usual, we need to call the method. Let's call more even than odd. And I guess we should save the result because it's being returned. So I'm going to say Boolean result equals, so it gets saved to something. And then I'm going to go ahead and print out the results. Well, I guess actually I'm going to do both the array and the results. Okay. So we're going to call more even than odds, store the value that it returns to results, print out the array, and print out what the, the result was. So here it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Does it have more evens than odds? It does not. It has a 2 and a 4, but 1, 3, and a 5 are odd, so it doesn't work. What if I change one of those odds to an even? Now there are three evens, and we see that it returns true. So there's a lot of different fun things you can do when traversing arrays. Um, shift left, shift right, array increasing, more even than odd. Hopefully these will help you as you practice your Java arrays uh, in the future. Thanks for watching.